are just about ready. Try to spread yourselves out. Japanese folklore, 
it is the catfish that is supposed to be responsible for earthquakes. And isn't it a twist of fate that he would be a specialist in that field? So later he went to the Tulsa Private Junior High School and made his own pocket radio. So it must have been an exceptional school to have that kind of teaching. Then he went on to Kyoto University, where he attended classes with Susumu Tonegawa, the 1987 Nobel Prize winner for physiology and medicine. I think some of you have done your presentation on Susumu Tonegawa. Uh, he then entered the geology pr program at Kyoto University, and then on to China for studies in earthquake prediction. He saw the aftermath of the Tangshan Great Earthquake in 1976. It's called the greatest earthquake of the 20th century. I'm not sure if the Great Eastern Japan Earthquake rivals that or not. Uh, he became then the, oh, after that, in 1995, he uh, did studies on the Great Hanshin Earthquake near Kobe. It was a very heavy earthquake as well. Uh, in 2003, he became the 24th president of Kyoto University. 2009, the director of the International Institute for Advanced Studies in Kyoto. 2011, Great East Japan Earthquake and Tsunami Studies. He went there himself and witnessed very much. After that, 2013, he became president of the Kyoto University of the Arts. 2018, the chairman of the board for the Prefectural University of Shizuoka, and now he is the president of the University of Shizuoka. And maybe you all give a hand to Dr. Kazuo Oike. Thank you very much. Too much detail. Oh, I thought that was not enough. <laughs> I will be interpreting. Oike sensei can speak English, but I'm going to make it light on him, and I will do the interpreting. So, sorry, I can't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, translation, very good translator. I hope so. Here is the title Science, Technology, and the Arts. いろんなあのスライドをなるべく写真でわかるように用意をしてきましたので、えー、聞いてください。Please listen as I prepared many photos for you as well, so I hope it's easy to understand. これが目次です。This is the introduction. でさっ,さっきもイントロダクションするんだけども自分でもイントロダクション。<笑><笑> he says he thinks that I've done most of the introduction. <笑> Another introduction. And here is another introduction. He was born in 1940, so he's involved with three Tokyo Olympics. In 1940, there was supposed to be an Olympics in Tokyo, but because of the war, it was cancelled. で1964年に東京オリンピックが実現して、その時私は大学の助手になって間もなく、大変給料が安かったけれども、一生懸命努力をして、初めてテレビジョンを買いました。The salary was very cheap, but he did his best, he worked hard, and he bought himself a television. From this April, he became the president of the University of Shizuoka, and he came to live here in Shizuoka. And now, to see the Tokyo Olympics, he bought another brand new TV. <laughs> so he's, as a matter of fact, involved with three Tokyo Olympics. 
今日の話、芸術、科学と技術と芸術にいろんな関係があるところが要所要所に出てくるんですけど、あの立派しい話はもう省略します。I'm going to shorten all of the details, but here we go with my career. でもね、あの中学校の時にラジオ受信機を自分で作っていた。今はもう何の不思議もないけれども、皆さんは買って。でしょうけれども私は一生懸命自分で真空管を使ってラジオを自分で作る。So when he was in elementary school, he was able to make his own radio receiver. And modern people have to go, they can just go out and buy one at the store, but he made his own from vacuum tubes. でそれがそのフィールドワークで地震の観測をやったりするのに大変役に立ちました、ね。And that really worked out well for him when he went out to the field. For measuring earthquakes. それから、京都大学のプレジデントになったときに、いろんな学問を経験することができた。And when he became the president of Kyoto University, he was able to experience all varieties of fields of study. それからまた、京都芸術大学の学長を8年務めたので、そこでまた芸術家とたくさん話をすることができた。So when he was at the Kyoto University for the Arts, He was able to communicate with very many artists, and so he was able to learn very much from them. And from that experience, he has been, he has been able to tie everything up with science and technology and well, and therefore we have today's presentation. That is my experience. Look at the very bottom two. This is the future that we are talking about. This is a very rare career vita, isn't it? Three years later, in the year 2024, he plans to finish with his Presidency at this university, uh, University of Shizuoka, and then he plans to go on to. So, the, what I said was, I was in the university, and I was in the university, and I was in the university, and I was in the university. So, when he graduated from the university, he immediately became a professor, so he has not gone through the master program. So he is going to enter the master's degree program from the year 2024. So this is now lifelong learning era. So this is what he is going to put into practice. The very bottom says that there will be a prediction of the 2038 earthquake. And he has written a book about that, which is here. And so in order to see that prediction through, he has to live through more than 100 years. And this is my career vita. So this is my career vita. So this is my career vita. So this is my career vita. Okay, within his lifetime, Oike Sensei has experienced the United States bombing of Tokyo during the Second World War. And within his lifetime, the Hiroshima bombing was also part of his experience. それから静岡大学にあのショあのミュージアムがあるけれども、第五福祐丸の被爆というそういうのも私の人生の中で大変。And he has also experienced the incident with the American testing of the hydrogen bomb in the Bikini Islands in 1954, where the 第五福祐丸 with the number five lucky dragon was a Tuna fishing boat that came back to the port of Yaisu. That's part of his experience also. So, then, later, it will be shown. In 2011, the Tokyo Dai Jishin, 
って福島第一原子力発電所が爆発してそれでまた被爆をするという体験をした。And in the year 2011, with the Fukushima number one nuclear power plant explosion, he has also gone to that spot to do a survey. And so he has been irradiated from that experience. So he has great interest in the problem of nuclear power. So, in what way is that science and technology tied in with the arts? I'm going to talk about that now. And the very center, top, is Tonegawa Susumu. In the very middle is Akishino no Miya, who is of the imperial family. And in the left, oh, excuse me. In the left is Ozawa Seiji, who is the great music conductor. So it's on a great bakusho mondai. Oh, these are comedians from the Japanese TV program. Rather famous. And these are Kyoto Geiko, or the training geisha. And here next to Ozawa Seiji is Matai san. This is the number one person he wants to be friends with in the world. Who is this? Saudi Arabia, no the king of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> he gave me pocket money gift of a trillion dollars and asked me to make a city and come to visit his country. And so, through all his life experience, the wealthiest person he's ever met. So he's had that history. I have done many studies, but one of my studies is the heaven, earth, and man, and this book is about that topic. This is the Eastern philosophy of thought, combining all the concepts of the universe within this book. Astronomy. Study of the earth and the study of people. And study of the man. And man. Boon, this character is the shape of the human being. And here is the ancient character from old China. Heaven and people, earth and people, people and people is the study. So I fuse all of those, and with that we will have our debate, our discussion. This is a textbook of about 100 years old, Japanese Earth Studies. Oh, these are the characters that are written by the Japanese calligrapher that I just mentioned, Kui Seko Sensei. Okay, this is Ten, Heaven, Earth, People. Below this, Ten, Mi, Nanteo, and this Star. Star in the sky. Ah, stars, Hoshi. Okay, Heaven in the stars. Earth 
and the flower, flower and people and love. Yes. There you show. Just one of these costs tens of thousands of yen. And this teacher's calligraphy is is placed in big characters at the Shizuoka airport. Geodiversity study group is also something that I've been a part of. Very complicated study of the Japanese uh, geologic topography and geology. Very diverse. So in this group, we all study very heavily. And what else comes up in that topic? Japanese sake. Very many varieties. Vegetables and fruits as well. Very many varieties. This is also diversity. I would like you all to know about this particularity of Japan. Because I'm a seismologist, here is the distribution of Japanese earthquakes. From the 21st century, these are more than 500,000 earthquake occurrences within Japan. And the frequency distribution of Japanese There are many, many small earthquakes, but not so many big earthquakes. These statistics are very important because it shows that there really are not enough of the great earthquakes occurring. That is what is shown here. It's a very long term occurrence. Because this, this distribution is so complicated, I decided to show you this in three dimensional rotation. From this imagery, you can see that the plague, that is the Pacific plague, is diving beneath the Japanese islands. I have lots of data like this, so in your countries also you can see what is going on below the surface of the earth. We know very much about the atmosphere of the Earth, but we know very little about what is below the surface. So, for all of you in your countries as well, please look below the surface of the Earth. Okay, when I was president of the Kyoto University of the Arts, I also witnessed a chimpanzee making artwork. And here you will see him producing the art. Oh, this is for his congratulations as the president of the Kyoto University of the Arts. So this chimpanzee doesn't need to 
receive any treats in order to do this. He does it of his own will. So when he displayed this in his president's office at that university, many artists from around the world would come and look and say, oh wow, this is wonderful, this is wonderful. Who did this? But nobody could guess who was the artist. And right now, this is in my new president's office, so if you want to come and have a look, you may come. And so it just goes to show that the chimpanzee doesn't need to be treated in order to be moved to do something. He does it of his own free will because he likes it. So when I look at this piece of artwork, I think, what in the world are human beings? And what exactly is the art? And so right now, there are very many chimpanzees who are enjoying their artwork, so pretty soon he is going to have an exhibition. So please come to see that. Okay, one other thing of importance I would like to say is that in the textbooks it is written that human beings in their evolving uh, stood up on their hind legs and began to walk, but that's mistaken. So in recent studies, it is being shown that human beings actually walked about with four arms and hands. And so when human beings went out into the savanna, in order to look far away, they stood up on their back hands. And so that's why, unlike horses and cattle, instead of hooves, we have five fingers on our feet. And this is very important in technological studies for driving and other handling of machinery. Human beings, when they are going to be handling these instruments, they have to be designed with the notion that they are using their hands, not their feet, or else they will make a very big mistake in their design. So in the future, in all the work that you are doing, please, if you have to do research about the human body and the legs, please remember that these are hands that you are standing on. I've given this speech to many people, and the people who understand this most of all are those who are athletes who skate, Olympic athletes who skate. They understand it the most. And from all of that, I have delved into the study of nature and art, and from now I'm going to talk about that topic. 
かけがあって2004年に日本の文部科学省があの技術の未来を予測した報告を出しました。In 2004, the Ministry of Education has decided to promote science and technology to support the preservation, utilization, and creation of human cultural resources, as it's written there. <laughs> and you can see this on the internet. 